everybody! Today I am going to be doing a quick little um, Technique a Week crafting club tutorial chat kind of a thing about knitting cables. Um, it's in honor of St. Patrick's Day. Um, a lot of the sort of traditional Irish, um, if you think about like a fisherman sweater, would have a lot of real intricate cable kind of patterns on it. Um, so that's a pattern motif that is very common in Ireland. And since today is St. Patrick's Day, I decided to go with the theme. Um, so the how I normally work these things, so I kind of chat a little bit about the concept of what we're doing, and then I'm going to show you a little sample on how I'm actually going to do it. Um, and then I'll give you if I've got any tips or tricks um, to catch you up on. Uh, so that is what I will get started on. So I'm going to start with the very most simple of the cable patterns. Um, and you can see right here on this hat, the very basics of a cable are, is knitting stitches out of order. That is all there is to it. It's one of those, some of my favorite kinds of patterns are um, ones that look like you've done something really fancy, but they're actually very easy to do. It's my favorite way to do patterns um, uh, because they look really impressive to everybody around you, but you didn't actually have to have to be all that fancy yourself. Um, so the very, very basics of of how cables work is you're going to knit your stitches out of order. So if you think about you've got eight stitches on your knitting needles and normally you would knit stitch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You'd knit them in that order. For cables, you're going to take the first four stitches of the stitches that you would be doing for the cable. You're going to take those off your needles altogether. You're going to get them out of the way, put them on a, some spare yarn or um, a cable needle, and then you're going to knit stitches five, six, seven, eight first, and that's going to pull those stitches over. And then you're going to take these stitches that you, you got out of your way off your needle, you're going to put those back up onto your needle, and then you're going to knit stitches one, two, three, and four. So you're just knitting stitches out of order, and that's going to put that twist in the fabric that gives you that cabled look. So that is all there is to cables, knitting stitches out of order. The biggest thing that's going to determine how your cables look and what may, if they look pretty or just like a whole wad of, of stitches all out of order um, has to do with the setup. So cable knitting is like 90% setup and 10% actually doing something. Um, the biggest thing with your, with your cable setup is you are going to want to create um, like a nice smooth surface for your cable. And then you're going to want to put that on a background that looks different than the cable itself. So if you see it in this hat, the cable stitches themselves are that smooth stocky net stitch. That's what the cable is actually created from. And if you notice on here, it's set on that reverse stocky net stitch or that like bumpy looking background. Um, and that is super, super common for, for cables. So when you're, when you're putting cables into something, you're normally going to have the section in the middle, where, which is going to be the cable. Those eventually are going to be stitches you knit out of order. And then on both sides of that, you're going to have the, the reverse stocking it, like the pearl on the knit side kind of a thing. And so that's going to make your cable pop out. So visually, you will really see the cable standing out against the background. You can work a cable just like you've got just a mass of knitted fabric and you just work the cable smack down in the middle of that mass of knitted fabric. You can do that, but the cable, it, it's a lot more subtle. It doesn't jump out at you. It doesn't look so neat and tidy and so intentional. It looks a little bit more, I think it looks like, um, like tree roots almost. Um, they kind of fade into the background a little bit more, um, which can look interesting, but may not, it's not gonna give you that visual punch that you get. So if we look at some of these others, these were just the the hats and scarves out of the uh, like family basket of the hats and scarves we wear. Um, these are all uh, my original designs. Most of them we don't have the yarn for. Most of these are old, old, old um, patterns. All of our pattern designs are available for purchase on Ravelry. Um, we're just Nomad Originals um, up there. And um, so this, you can kind of see that same thing. You've got the lines of background of that bumpy, um, the bumpy reverse stockinette stitch there. And then the cables themselves sit on this background of 
um, of the smooth stockinette stitch. Um, so that's how basically almost any cable pattern that I have ever seen or worked with, you're going to get that same kind of a thing. This one is done just a little bit differently. Um, I love this pattern. The cable, the cable wanders around um, on it, so that cable, it's called Cables on the Move. It's one of our patterns. Um, and so the cable actually sort of goes back and forth through the piece. And this time, it's set on a background that's different than the cable. Um, it's, this time, it's set on a background of slipped stitches. And so that's what gives it that elongated look. And the cable itself is still done with that stockinette stitch. So it's the same concept of the cable fabric is different than the stitches immediately beside it. Um, so the first, first thing to remember is that cable, it's all about the background. It's all about the setup and kind of where you're putting it in relation to what your other fabric around it looks like so that your cable pops out at you. Um, the second thing about cables is they are just knitting your stitches out of order. So I am going to um, show you exactly what that looks like here. Um, so you need to get to where you're going to place your cable. So you can tell on all of these, the cables are always in the same like straight column of stitches. So on this particular little sample piece that I've got, um, the four stitches right in the center are the stockinette stitch stitches, the like the smooth, just knitted fabric um, stitches, knitted on the front, purled on the back to create that smooth fabric. So those four stitches are where my cable is actually going to go. Um, and everything around it, there's two, <clears throat> two stitches at the beginning that are just knit to create an edging for my little sample square that doesn't roll. And then there's two stitches that are purled. That's going to be that contrast background that our cable sits against so that it pops out towards you. Um, and now when we're ready to actually do the cable stitches, we are going to be working our full cable is across four stitches. And this is just an example. You can do a cable with as many, I mean, there's a million different variations on a cable, but the basic concept is always the same. I'm going to be working my cable across these four stitches. I'm going to take half that number of stitches, I'm going to take it off of my needle because I'm going to knit these out of order, and I'm going to put them on another, it can be on another needle, it can be on a cable hook, it can be on a safety pin, you can, if you're real brave, you can just leave them on the a out, hanging out in the air, however you want to do that. Um, and then you're either going to let them hang to the front of your piece, or you're going to let them hang to the back of your piece. So they can either hang to the front or to the back, and that's going to determine does your cable turn to the right or does your cable turn to the left, which way does the twist go. Some really fancy cables will have you do both. Some parts of them will twist one way and some parts of them will twist the other way. If you've ever seen those cable patterns that almost look like a, like a horseshoe, those are generally the cable on half twists one direction and the cable on the other half twists the other direction. Um, and that's how you achieve that. Um, but to me, the most basic cable is you have those extra stitches be in the front, um, honestly, because they're easier to see and keep track of because they're closer to your face. Um, do keep in mind, I'm on the opposite side that you would normally be. I'm doing this as if you were doing the knitting on it. Um, so I know right now it's not closer to my face, but it's um, when you're actually doing it, it's going to be closer. So we slip two stitches off. We knit <clears throat> the next two stitches exactly like normal. So I'll flip it around and I'm just knitting these two exactly like every single other knit stitch you've ever knit in your whole life. Slide them on there. And now we are going to take the two stitches that we took off of our piece and we're going to put them back over here onto the needle where the stitches that we haven't worked yet live. So I'm just going to slide them over there. Now we take our cable needle or whatever you're using to hold your stitches and sit it down. You're finished with that for, for quite a while. And now we've got these two stitches. They look a little funky. It's, it feels like it's kind of tied together almost. And it's because we've knit those stitches out of order. So they are a little bit funky. But now we're going to knit those last two stitches exactly like every other stitch you've ever knit in your life. Um, so knit those two exactly like normal. And now we have finished our cable. So that is it. That's cabling. Um, and you can see the fabric here. You've got this little crossover piece where your fabric crosses over itself, and that's the beginning of your cable. 
um, the rest of the piece or the rest of the row, you're just again creating the background. So I'm going to do two purl stitches to create that background, um, the sort of ridgy bumpy section that's going to make the cable fabric pop out against it. Um, and that is what's going to allow you to complete your cable. So we, you can see this is the very start of the cable. You've got that one little twist. <clears throat> And cables don't ever look like much. When you're looking at this, um, you may be thinking, that doesn't look impressive. They're, they don't look like much until you start to get a stack of them. Um, so right at the beginning of a cable piece, if you look just at the very beginning, it doesn't look like much. It just kind of looks like it's, it's folded over itself. Um, it's once you start adding and making them stacked up on top of each other is when you really get that impact of the cable. Um, so if you're starting a cable piece and thinking, eh, this is supposed to look cooler than it does, keep going. Um, it's it's going to take you a couple cable turns to, to really get that look. Um, and that is what it's called every time you actually take the stitches and knit them out of order. That row where you did that is called your cable turn um, or your cable row. <clears throat> And those, <coughs> excuse me, um, those rows do not happen every row. So we did the cable part. Now I've got three rows where I'm not going to be doing any more cabling. Um, I'm just going to be creating my background fabric. Um, like I said, 90 plus percent of cabling is the setup. Um, so you only cable the general rule is if you are doing a cable across four stitches, like my sample one is here, you do that cable turn every fourth row. So you do the turn like I just did, and then I'm going to do three rows where I'm just knitting and purling. Um, and then you're going to do your cable turn and then on the fourth row. And then you'll do three rows with nothing, and then you'll do your cable turn on the fourth row. Um, you can make much wider cables. So like this hat, th this cable is much wider than four stitches. I've slept since I made it, so I don't remember exactly how many, but my guess is 10. Um, so if your cable is 10 stitches, you're going to do this cable turn every 10th row. So you'll do nine rows, just knit, purl, knit, purl, and then on the 10th row, you'll take half the number of stitches. So you'll take five stitches off the needle, you'll knit the next five, you'll put those five back on the needle, and then you'll knit those five um, so that you create that twist. And then you'll do nine rows where you're not doing anything. Um, and that's that's the basics. That is the, the most basic way that you can possibly do a cable. Um, you can invent however many stitches that you want to do. Generally cable patterns um, for, for just a basic twist cable are going to be, you're going to work your cable over an even number of stitches. Um, like I said, four stitches, ten stitches, um, generally that's because you take half of the stitches off of your needle um, and if it's an even number, there is exactly half. Um, if you've got a seven stitch cable, which, which stitch is three stitches and which stitch is four stitches. Um, so generally cables are worked over an even number of stitches. That has the added benefit of you always want to be doing your cable on the same side of your work. So if you're working flat, you always need to be turning your cable on the right side, like the pretty side um, of your work. So the back side doesn't look nearly so pretty. Um, and it's not hideous or anything, it just doesn't look like a cable. Um, so this is what the back side of a cable stitch look like, looks like. It's interesting, it's just not a cable. <laughs> um, and so you're always going to be doing that cable twist on a right side, a pretty side row. And then when you're doing the wrong side, you're not doing your cable twist. Well, if you're supposed to do them every 10th row, it, it needs to be an even number of rows. So if you had a seven stitch cable, you can't, the seventh, the seventh row on one round of your pattern is going to be a right side row. And then the seventh row on the next one is going to be a wrong side row. And so that won't make a cable. You're going to have one section where it's the pretty cable turn. And then the next thing is going to be like the inside out version. Um, so that's another reason why they're often done on an e with an even number of stitches. That being said, there are some really fun, intricate cable, cable patterns that you can do. I have seen them where you've got um, a very, very big cable, like your cable's worked across 30 stitches or something, 
and within that 30 stitches like 20 stitches of it becomes its own cable and that 20 stitch section twists over the 10 stitch section and back again. Um, you a lot of times bobbles are incorporated in with cable stitches so you're going to have cables crossing and then where they're crossing you're going to have a little bobble or like a little bump um, kind of a thing in there. So you can get as complicated with cables as you want. Um, generally, me personally, I prefer a little bit more straightforward. I don't love to be tied to a pattern where I feel like I have to, every single time I'm ready to do a row, I have to look at the pattern. Um, I think mostly that's a life stage thing. I've got little, little kids um, and I just don't have enough brain cells and times in the day, time in the day to sit down and, and be that focused on it. So I much prefer these style of cables where it's, okay, four stitches every four rows, eight stitches every eight rows. Um, and that's really all I've got to pay attention to. And I'm not having to look line by line um, but there have been times when I have really enjoyed the super intricate um, I have a pattern up called the Irish cabled neck warmer and that is one where you have to look at it every single time there's bobbles and noops and <laughs> and drop stitches and the really intricate cables and front twists and back twists and all kinds of things um, so it can be fun if you're up for a challenge um, I did that was a it's a short neck warmer like it, it just goes around it's a little cowl kind of a thing it's not a scarf um, it's not a sweater. It's not a really, really large project um, because I like using lots of brain cells for exactly as long as I want to do it. And then I'm done and I don't want to do it anymore. Um, so that's the basics of how cables work and kind of a little bit of a taste of what you can do with them. Um, a couple of tips and tricks that I would recommend. Um, the first one is if you notice all of these, the yarn itself is pretty tame. I haven't chosen to do a cabled piece with like a wild and wacky like variegated yarn that has a bunch a bunch of different ones. I know this one is a self stripe but it's a subtle self stripe and even self stripes are not as wacky as they're not as visually busy as a variegated yarn would be. Um, so my first tip with cables is going to be choose a choose a yarn that's going to let your cables do the talking rather than a yarn that's going to be really loud. Um, these are always with caveats of it's supposed to be fun and if you want to if you want to go as wild and wacky with your yarn um, choice go for it. Um, if you're having fun you're doing it right but generally your work is going to stand out more the cable pattern that you've put in it is going to be more visible if you work on a, um, a more of a solid color yarn and that goes for yarn texture as well so if you've got a yarn that has a lot of like thick and thin to it that's not your eye is not going to be drawn as much to the cable you're going to see the sort of busyness of the yarn itself a little bit more um, so I think that uh, a, a fairly even texture fairly smooth fairly uniform color yarn is going to really show off those cables the very best um, the more complicated the cable pattern, I think the more important that is. If you're doing something really basic like this, I think you could get by with a busier yarn. Um, I know a lot of people talk about like, do you want light colors or dark colors to show the cable off more? To me, it doesn't matter. To me, they all I sort of got a dark, medium, and light um, in here. And to me, you can see the cables on, on all of them. Um, I personally don't choose to work with black yarn very often just because I find I'm... I'm getting to be of a certain age and I do a lot of my knitting at night and when it's dark outside and I've got black yarn it makes my life more difficult um, so I don't typically go black but it's not because the cables are not going to show up on it it's just I don't typically knit with black yarn all that often um, my next tip is going to be if cables scare you a little bit make a tiny little swatch of your cable pattern before you jump into a bigger project just to give yourself the confidence that okay I'm doing this it's it's going well um, they're fun to do and I know a lot of people are intimidated by them um, once you've done a tiny little sample and you watch your cable show up you're gonna think yes I want to I want to do a bigger project versus if you feel like you have to start with the bigger project you may not get it started because it feels a little intimidating um, I'm trying to think of other if I have other tips if you 
are you've maybe done a little bit of cables before or you're into it from what I'm talking about the almost like a design your own cable um, from what I've talked about um, if you want to plop a cable panel so a section with cables in it whether it's just one cable or three cables next to each other or a whole huge intricate design with cables um, if you are going to add a cable motif or a cable section to an existing pattern you need to remember that cables are going to use up like width of of your piece so this hat was supposed to be for me this hat does not fit me because I knit this hat 10 years ago before I like really had that in there um, every time you take stitches and twist them over themselves that section of eight stitches once it's twisted over and like nailed in place like that those eight stitches no longer stretch as if they were eight stitches they now stretch as if they were four stitches so if you're putting a bunch of cables on something the that minus four stitches minus four stitches minus four stitches every time you do a cable twist that takes away a lot of space in a project and so this hat became for my children and, and now it's too small for them um just because i didn't take that into account this is the size hat that you want that i want for me um so you want to think about that and i would almost just straight go through and do the math if you've got a hat that's supposed to be a hundred stitches around and you're going to put one eight stitch cable in it you're going to say now i want my hat to be 104 stitches around because that eight stitch cable is going to eat four of those stitches if you're coming through here and you're saying i've got one cable two cable three cable four cable add all those up and you need to cast on that many more stitches um and just like all of the knitting patterns say you should do a swatch um i get it with the hat um this is a do as i say not as i do because i just made this hat and it was too small and i gave it to somebody who it fit um but if you are going to make something where you really care how it comes out you should make a swatch and measure the swatch and see okay how stretchy is this how much smaller is this really going to be because of the cables um so that would be my other uh, my other tip for the uh, sort of plopping cables into an existing pattern my last cabling tip is if you are doing something that has a big cable panel on it um, and you mess up the cable so a lot of times cables are going to be plopped into patterns that otherwise are very straightforward like this hat is just stockinette stitch all the way around except for this one cable well if i'm knitting and knitting and knitting and i realize here halfway up the hat oh no i messed up down here i i twisted that that cable the wrong direction i held it in the back instead of the front whatever the cable mess up was if i notice that way down here and i feel like i have to unravel the entire hat to get back there i've wasted a lot of stitches um of and a lot of my time doing that you can actually just push the stitches for the cable only push those stitches off your needle let that piece unravel down and then just follow the directions for the cable part fix that and get back up to where your your stitches are to go around and around again that's kind of a more advanced technique of dropping stitches to fix something and picking back up um, I'll probably put that on my I've got a list of all of the topics that I want to do in my technique a week um, thing so I'll probably put that on there but just keep it in the back of your head that that's an option um, if you're if you're feeling brave um, my rule about fixing things is fixing things is always try to fix it before you unravel it because if you do you're going to have learned a new skill and it's going to be wonderful you're going to save yourself a lot of time if you don't manage to fix it you were going to unravel it anyway <laughs> you just unravel it you didn't lose anything and you gained some experience um, so I would always say give it a try see see if you can do it um, and go on from there uh, so I hope it was useful and helpful um, and that you guys had a little bit of fun learning something about cables. I hope you are inspired to knit some cables for St. Patrick's Day or just because you like cables. Um, and let me know um, in the comments here if you've got any questions or feel free to uh, get in touch in any of our social media stuff. We're on Facebook and Instagram as Nomad Yarns and on um, YouTube as Nomad Yarns. We're making some changes to our YouTube channel, um, adding some more uh, not just knitting and crochet content over there. So come find us if you haven't. <laughs>